Hello everyone, Basically here, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. Today I have three races for you at the Red Bull Ring with a chap called NVW Rick and of course everyone else in the lobby. But I really wanted to give a big shout out and a thanks to this, this chap here, NVW Rick. Because he is about to give us three absolutely sensational races that I won't forget in a long, long time. They're absolutely brilliant. So sit back, relax. You'll enjoy this one. Um, if you love sim racing and you love this game, I think you'll enjoy these races because they were superb, to say the least. So let's get this race underway. So we're on Gran Turismo Sport. Five laps of the Red Bull Ring. We've started in P1 in the Subaru WRX STI. Very surprised to see this car at the top of the leaderboard. Red Bull Ring known for... MR cars kind of being dominant or high powered cars. The Subaru, neither of those actually. So, really surprised to see it at the top of leaderboards, but I do have a soft spot, soft spot I should say, for the Scooby. Straight away, then, Rick has got a lovely bit of slipstream as we go up the hill and I attack turn two. Now, I go a little bit deep um, and try and cover off the apex, but Rick comes back with a lovely switchback and gets that P1. So, a lovely move by Rick there. Um, Fantastic. In the Aston Martin is what he's gone for. The Aston Martin V12 Vantage. Plenty of horsepower under the hood in that thing. Whereas my little Scooby with its 2.5 engine it is struggling a little bit top end. But we're going to do our absolute best to, to stick with Rick here. Because the ball's in our court now. We've got the slipstream now as he just misses the apex slightly. Goes a little bit wide through turn 5 as we get ready for turn 6. Subaru, really, really nice handling car on this game. Absolutely superb to drive. It's just the only downfall is, of course, that top end, whereas the Aston Martin has it in bucket load. So if we go to the right, or we, we think about it, we kind of try and scare him into going wide into the apex, which he does slightly, but he still does very well as we go through turn 7, 8, and 9. Just absolutely fantastic set of corners, turn 8 and 9. Uh, it's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I love this track. It's so fast, it's so flowing. Uh, it just promotes good racing, even though it's only got nine la uh, corners as such. It's just absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we go through turn one. Re a real pig of a corner, by the way. An absolute real pig. To get that right, you really have to cut the inside of the curve. And it's so easy to go wide at the top and get a corner cutting penalty. It's an absolute disaster. But anyways, we're looking for the breaker point. Just about go to the right hand side. And again, he does a beautiful switch back, which I, I so desperately tried to cover off there. I had to break late to go on the right hand side to get that position. But he does a switchback of dreams once more at turn two. And fantastic once again from Rick. So really, really enjoying this race so far. I wasn't expecting really to have such a battle like this, to be honest. But uh, we're only, we've only done one and a bit laps. So, I'm, you know, straight away I knew when I was in this race, I thought I've got, I've, I've got a hell of a race on here. And I could tell with just how clean he was that we, we were going to have a... Yeah, we're going to have an absolute amazing battle. Amazing battle, I should say, if I can get my words out. Anyways, you can see, so the middle sector, so let's say turn four, five, and six. Um, I would say this Subaru is absolutely uh, head and hands above the Aston Martin. That's where Rick really struggles. But amazingly, you're not. <laughs> we're going to go side by side through <laughs> turns eight and nine. I mean, I don't think I've ever quite seen that in Gran Turismo Sport, where literally side by side... I don't think there was any contact there whatsoever. The amount of respect. I've never met this dude before. And we were going side by side on the second lap at the Red Bull Ring. Just unheard of. And it was fantastic. And it was brilliant. And that replay camera just goes to show how good that looked, I thought. Absolutely fantastic. Running out of words really to describe just how much I enjoyed that. But we've gone through turn one well again. I'm trying to switch tactics up here. I'm going to go to the left-hand side and try to switch back myself. But just didn't quite have the momentum to get it done and Rick was really he had a nice exit in that vantage there's nothing I could do uh, the switchback would be difficult anyways because when we're side by side he's, he's got the he's got the better engine and it's just gonna slowly but surely pull away from me by the time we get to this corner a little bit of a lag spike there I'm not quite sure what that was but it seemed to make Rick go right I'm sure on his screen he was absolutely fine but on my screen he went a little bit wide uh, looking for the white marker on the right hand side to break nice and tight the apex through turn five and then getting ourselves re prepared for turn six nice and tight on the curb there two wheels on the red stuff and two wheels on the red stuff on the outside as well again potentially could get the slipstream and look for a move up the inside I'm gonna look but I just I think I'm gonna back out of it here because 
I didn't I didn't want to risk I mean it was it was awesome doing it last lap but I didn't want to risk it doing it again I am conscious of the Italian behind us uh, he's only eight tenths behind us and he's now going to be seven tenths on that's Jolson yeah so eight tenths behind us so as soon as he gets within three quarters of a second if you haven't played this game before if you get within three quarters of a second they will get a slipstream and that's a massive advantage anyways we're going to skip ahead to lap four now you can see Rick just goes a little bit wide there doesn't quite click the apex as well as he'd want and then I'm looking, I'm sniffing for an opportunity. And if I'm going to get it done, it's going to have to be through one of these corners. I don't think I'll be able to get him on the straight. As we've talked about, lack of top end, is, it's, not going to, it's not going to help us at all. But we're super close now. And you see the Italian actually behind us is sniffing. He is looking for blood as well. Now I am again going to try and go. Am I going to go for the fake one here? I'm going to go side by side. So I go to the right. Rick tries to cover it off. I just about react in time. Go for a dive up the inside of turn eight and managed to pull that move off. So now we're up to P1, and we've just got one lap to go. So we're going to cross the line here. I'll go over to the right-hand side to defend it. I'm going to jump on board with Rick. He gets all the slip he can. The very last moment, he ducks out of it, pulls to the left, tries to hang it around the outside, but I'm having absolutely none of that. This Italian comes out of nowhere, uh, clips the rear of my Subaru, uh, and then that actually causes him to get a bunch of oversteer, and he collides with Rick a little bit there. But it doesn't matter too much because Rick's still in that slipstream, so it's not affecting him too badly. But you can see there's two other cars now involved in this. So if they get the chance, they will take Rick, and that will affect him uh, dramatically. And you can see he just starts closing the gap. He does look for a move on the right-hand side there. I do close the door, though. I, don't let, I didn't leave it open. I knew straight away. I could see on the radar what he was trying to do. I thought, I'm not having any of that, son. And I just closed it immediately because I knew where he was going to go. And amazingly, we're going to have... Another side-by-side -side shot here. Just maximum respect. Just trying to give him all the room I can. He does, I think, touch the green stuff on the outside. He does, unfortunately, get a nudge from the Spaniard, which causes him to go wide on the turn, <laughs> on the exit of turn six as we enter turn seven. And, yeah, he just hits the green stuff, and that was it. That was his race over, unfortunately. Drops right back, which is a real shame. I will say, though, straight afterwards, the Spaniard did immediately apologise. He knew he was in the wrong, so fair play to him. Uh, it takes, you know, you can easily take someone out and just leave and forget about it. But he immediately apologised. So, massive shout out to him. Uh, fantastic stuff. So, first round then, race one of three. I've won the first one. Let's see if we can just get two out, two, two out of two straight away, shall we? And let's see if Rick can retaliate. Same sort of lobby. Then no real change. Uh, same positions. I'm not sure if the Spaniard's there anymore. We've got a Frenchman uh, in the Lamborghini. Ah, the Spaniard is there. He's in fourth place. My, my apologies. So. Opinions, guys, by the way. What do you think of the swapping between my camera and Rick's? Do you, do you like the idea? I just thought I'd include it in this one, just so you can get a, a real good perspective of what it looks like for him as we get this race underway again. You see that yellow kerb on the inside of that corner? It's such a pain. It's really dependent where your wheel is. It really can mess up the whole lap. I thought I did okay, but, of course, Rick also did okay, and he's got different plans. You can see the slipstream he got from me then was absolutely monstrous and I was as late as I possibly could be on the brakes there lose the rear end attached a little bit a little bit of oversteer try and correct it we're back in a straight line again power down 100% throttle got absolutely no choice Rick is actually pushing me along here a little bit which is quite nice to see I do wonder if in, in the back of his mind he's thinking to himself I want to fight with you Ollie but I don't want to get the Spaniard involved again because I don't want to get nudged by accident so I reckon in this opening lap there, he probably just wants to get that slipstream gap away from the Spaniard so we can start fighting. Remember, three quarters of a second is what he will need, what we will need really, to avoid the Spaniards really getting a nice slip and catching up with us. As I am just trying to keep my head down through this first lap. And so far, so good. No real mistakes apart from turn two. About four tenths. He gains about a tenth on this straight alone after turn seven with the slip. So that is quite dramatic. I know it doesn't sound like a lot. But in racing, it can make all the difference. Clipping the inside of a turn nine there. Again, difficult corner to get right. You can easily drift out wide on the exit of that. You get yourself a half a second penalty. I believe a chap behind us has actually got a half second penalty. I hope that's not Rick. I don't believe it is. I think he's okay. As I go wide there, which is a, which is really, really annoying. Am I going to get a penalty for that? No, I'm not actually. But it does give Rick an absolutely awesome, awesome launch out of turn one. And he is going to absolutely fly past me. There's no way I can defend that. And if I even attempted to, 
I reckon there would have been murder. So I'm glad I didn't. Racing still clean, which is absolutely awesome. So it gets past, and I don't really have another opportunity until we start lap three. And I managed to nail turn one, actually. And you can see the slip I've got nowhere near as effective in my car as it is for Rick. But we're going to get the slip. We're going to just slightly start outpowering him as such. We'll get more top end at the, at the end of the straight. Now, I'm going to try to switch back once more, but decide against it, actually. I thought I did, but I'm guessing not. I'm doing the voiceover afterwards. You can probably tell. Uh, yeah, so through turn two, just didn't have enough momentum to get the switch back on the inside. Now, I've got to slip once more. Rick's going to go defensive into turn three. Goes a little bit wide. Again, that Aston seems to struggle through these tighter corners. Uh, can't hit the apex or, or get those exit speeds as well as he wants. So I go for a big dive bomb there. I was just trying to, I think I was just trying to put him off there just to see what he would do. Is he going to go side by side with me like he did in the previous race through turns eight and nine? But he didn't, fair play. And yeah, he kept his nerve and he's kept the position. Flying through the middle sector then, you can see up by three or four attempts right there. Side by side once more, you can see the power disadvantage that I have, but that's something I'll take. Well, we're going to go side by side again through turns eight and nine, and we give each other the most maximum respect, which is absolutely awesome. But like I said, I don't think I've ever seen this. I don't think I've ever seen people fighting through turn eight and nine at Austria, the Red Bull Ring. I don't think I've ever seen it. I really, really don't. Uh, it, it's absolutely fantastic, and I, ca I can't thank this guy enough because um, I have not had a really, really good race from Gran Turismo in a while. Uh, and these three races were fantastic. So once again, Rick, thanks very much. Okay, Slipstream. Now, he goes defensive straight away. He does leave the door open slightly, but I don't think I could have braked any later. Otherwise, there would have been contact. Nice exit on that corner there. Uh, straight into second gear. I went into first gear for better rotation, but as soon as I started accelerating, straight into second. Otherwise, we're going to get a bundle load of oversteer, and we could have ended up in the barrier. Unfortunately, though, it wasn't enough, and Rick gets that position back as we're on lap Four, gone through turn three now. Uh, this is technically turn four as well. I suppose it is just a long right hander. Uh, breaking again, uh, the 100 meter board, I think, or 50 meter. Uh, it's the white line on the right hand side. Once again, you can see the advantage this car has <laughs> in the middle sector. Thinking about a move up the inside would have been a little bit naughty, but again, I could see I backed out of it straight away. Rick was wise enough to see exactly what was happening there, so he's done well to back out of it. And I've done well not to collide with him. So, again, fantastic stuff. Okay, breaking between the 100 meter and the 50 meter board there. I did not hit my apex as well at all there. Uh, and, yeah, I was lucky enough not to go too wide. And look, I am pixels. And I mean pixels. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I've literally got myself a half second penalty. I really thought I didn't get one then. I was literally about to go how close I was. But, yeah, I guess I got one. Oh, okay. Yeah, now I remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember now I binned it. Yeah, well, I say binned it. I got a half-second penalty uh, and then went wide again, got a second penalty uh, and served it and ended up, ended up finishing P2. So, unfortunate on that one, but it's my own fault. You know, these things happen. So that was race two. So it's now basic Ollie one, Rick one. So this is going to be the final showdown between myself and Rick. Uh, just, I've just, uh, honestly, I can't, I can't emphasize enough how much I enjoyed this. So... Massive thank you, Rick, for this. Absolutely enjoyed every single second of it. So, yeah, big shout-out to you, my friend. Right, okay. Last race, then. Another five laps of the Red Bull Ring. Can we hang on this time? And can we claim this victory? And can we make it two out of three? And I'm going to claim myself the champ as such against myself and Rick, our little 1v1. It's been absolutely awesome. And let's get this last race underway then. Break in earlier than you usually would. Normally break on the white line on the left-hand side, but you got to break a lot earlier than that. I believe it might, it might just be cold tyres and it might just be the fact that you've got a difference in speed. So you don't really know where your breaking point is, to be honest. It's completely different to what you do in qualifying. You can see Rick has got amazing slipstream there. But again, using 200 IQ play, just give me a nudge up the straight. He doesn't want to fight me too early on. Uh, as you can see, there's actually a Frenchman. And if you guys saw that just in the radar, there's a Frenchman who's extremely close. But Rick does the same sort of thing as he did in race two, I believe. Gives me a, nu a nudge up the first straight. And then the second straight, he's looking for the move. But I'm going aggressive in this one. I want to keep this position for as long as I possibly can. So for two, through turns three there, uh, a break in really, really late. Just I saw where he was breaking. I just made sure I braked literally 
an inch after him so I could make sure my car was side by side. So he had nowhere to go, he couldn't turn in, and it was game over. So we're on board with Rick once more. Now he goes horrendously wide there. It's just enough to get four wheels off, and that is going to cost him a half second penalty. So that is going to give me a little bit of breathing space. So we finish lap two. We go on to lap three now. Uh, a 129.0, not particularly fast at all. Uh, but it, w it was enough. It was enough to pull away at the time. But I think I may have just gone wide myself there. I think I may have just gone wide myself. I have. There you go. Half a second penalty. So the, the gap I'd made was actually enough to get out of the slipstream. And I've just put myself back in there, which is frustrating. Very, very frustrating. So we're going to have to serve this. The line where you serve the penalty here on Grand Turismo at Red Bull Ring is just up here. So I'm going to serve the penalty here. And you can see Rick. He is going to try and get all the suckage from my slipstream and he is going to fly past there on the left hand side as we go into the breaking point of turn three so now we're in the middle sector as i mentioned several times already this is where the subaru is at its strongest at this circuit absolutely awesome really good just really digs down into the corners you know what i mean it's very very good uh, at turning and getting that rotation and digging into those corners doesn't really get too much understeer if anything it just gets a bundle load of oversteer all of a sudden if you're not too careful okay turn seven and be careful of this curve by the way it has got a bit of a glitch at the moment if you go over it too much it will randomly spit you out okay we're not going to go side by side now we're not i was going to say we're not going to go side by side from turn eight and nine again surely not thinking about it but it's, it's early doors boys and girls it's early doors we've still got two and a bit laps to go we're actually going to cross the line here and we'll have two laps to go so we've got two laps to try and find a way past it remember if we try and get a moved up on the straight He'll probably just have us back on the next one. So we've got to be tactical about this. When we get this move done, we've got to choose the right place. We've got to be in the right position at the right time because he can just retaliate a lap later or a few corners later. So we may just have to leave this till the very, very last corner of the race. It's risky, but that's exactly what I have to do. And I go for a move here. Now, I did not mean to go for this at all. And I am so glad I did not go into the back of Rick here. But I think... I don't know what it was, maybe I just braked a little bit later than usual, or maybe Rick broke a little bit earlier than usual, but I, it just caught me off guard, and I am am I'm genuinely amazed when that happened, I didn't go into the back of him. I was so pleased, so pleased, because it's been absolutely awesome this race with Rick, and uh, I just thoroughly enjoyed it, and I hope you guys, you boys and girls have as well, but we've still got a lap and a half to go. Okay, turn five, getting ourselves ready for turn six. Don't go too wide out there, otherwise you will get a half second penalty easy to do you can see i've been on the inside of that curve attacking it all day long i feel like this is where rick was really struggling now we're going to go to the right as he goes to the left unfortunately like i said with the two engines that we got my advantage that i had coming out of the corner just kind of disappears completely by the time we're at the end of the straight so can't quite get the move done there we're going to have to make it if we do it's going to have to be one hell of a dive bomb okay one final lap to go can we get past NVW Rick 10. Are we going to go for it in turn one? No, we're going to break slightly earlier. We're going to concentrate on a very, very good exit and get the slip and potentially get him into turn two. But for me here, I feel like I might be a little bit too close and it's going to be really, really difficult. So Rick is on the left. Is he going to go to the right hand side of the defender? Of course he is. There's no real surprise there. Now I did want him to go to the right and then there's just leave a door open just a little gap but there wasn't enough and i try and try i try and try i try to switch back which what he did earlier and i can't quite pull it off once more so again all the suckage from that aston martin and the massive wang uh, that he's got on the back of that thing absolutely huge spoiler on the back of that aston martin okay getting all the slip you can see rick gets a bundle load of oversteer at the worst possible time manages to keep it under control goes to the left hand side he defends again the door's left open i go for a big dive bomb we're now side by side into turn five and then we're going to go side by side into turn six again all the respect i can give to him here and somehow my subaru has managed to get past him there in the middle sector thanks to its well thanks to the handle i think and rick is going to try and go around the outside of turns eight and nine which is incredibly brave and you can see on the radar he is still there he is still fighting with me and we <laughs> he just he just about goes a little bit wide there might have just been the slightest bit of contact and we're going to cross the line and we're going to get the win but that was absolutely fecking awesome rick i absolutely love that what that was just racing 
as it should be. Absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm telling you right now, if if more people race like Rick, the oh, sim racing would just be it just ah oh, just be amazing, wouldn't it? It would just be an absolutely brilliant. And even though there's not too much, you know, funny edits, memes, or anything in this video, I didn't think it needed it because it was just a straight up, you know, free races, one v one, fantastic battling, which is what sim racing is all about, and I absolutely love doing it. And fingers crossed, you guys enjoyed, you know, the going on boards, you know, switching between each driver. And I really hope you enjoyed this video and this battle. Fingers crossed you guys get to have a, a battle like this at some point on this game. Uh, GT Sport, sometimes, you know, pound for pound is one of the best sims, especially when you have races like that. Absolutely awesome. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you are new around here, and I'll catch you for the next one. Take care. Ta-da.